Thank you all for being here today. I'm Jennifer Gamble, Metro Council Member for District 3, and I want to thank all of you for being here today to join us on this beautiful afternoon and occasion to celebrate the designation of the Hank Snow Ranch, Rainbow Ranch as a historical marker in Madison and District 3. Let's give a good hand. is the home of several historic landmarks in Madison, including the Jackson House, the Kitty Wells House, the Patsy Klein's Dream Home, the Smith Carter House, and now the Hank Snow Rainbow Ranch. I encourage all of you to visit our historic landmarks, which are really a shining jewel in the Madison community. There are several people that I'd like to recognize today. Uh, first, starting with our mayor, Mayor Freddie O'Connell, who's here. Also, I'd like to recognize the Honorable Nancy Van Rees, who is the former council member for District 8, which is where this place started. And actually, Council Member Van Rees was responsible for getting this started, this, getting this designation of historical landmark started. And we really appreciate the work that you did. And she passed the baton over to me just this past August as I was elected to represent the area. Also, I'd like to re uh, recognize Mr. Tim Walker, who's the Executive Director of the Historical Commission. Thank you for all of your work to preserve historical places across the county. We appreciate all of the work that you all do. Let's see, who else do I have? I think I have everybody. Uh, I've got to recognize Mr. Jay Jackson, who gave us this invocation. He was a manager and worked with Mr. Hank Snow closely, and he was also the founder of Papa John's. Papa John's Pizza. So we have Mr. Papa John's here as well. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for the work that you do in our community. With that, I'm going to turn it over to our mayor, Freddie O'Connell. Thank you so much, Councilmember Gamble. It is great to be standing here on a fall afternoon with such beautiful weather in Nashville. Uh, and special thanks to Chair Wen and hope we get to do this so much more. These historical markers, as any of us travel the city, uh, really do tell so much of the story of Nashville. Um, and in this case, it's an honor and a privilege to be here today to talk a little bit more about why this marker matters. For decades, Hank Snow dazzled audiences at the Grand Ole Opry and along with this house receiving the historic landmark zoning designation in 2018 uh, that Councilmember Van Rees initiated, it's deserved this plaque and recognition uh, that the entire city and certainly visitors will be able to uh, understand more of the historical context. So my thanks also to the members of the Historic Commission for uh, their role in getting this done. This property is a rare treat for visitors who opt to stay here uh, because it is a trip into Music City's rich history. Hank was one of the first musicians in the United States to have a home studio. Uh, 
Uh, Hank and his wife, Minnie, established uh, a life here that entrenched him as one of the stars of the Grand Ole Opry. And preserving this type of history ensures that Music City stays true to its roots and allows generations to come to understand the ways in which Nashville has set itself apart as a beacon of musical innovation. Because, let's be honest, in 1950, building a recording studio in your home was as innovative as you can get, and it spawned generation, a generation of conversations about home occupation and home studios, and we have made some progress on that. Uh, my dad has actually been a part-time songwriter for decades himself, most of his adult life. And my brother and I grew up watching him record lo-fi demos in our den, which is also where my parents have their uh, remarkable vinyl collection. And uh, I think at this point I'm, I'm going to need to go drop by their house and see if they've got any Hank Snow in there uh, that I can work into my next DJ set. Uh, but today is, is such a great moment where we take a, a little, put a pen in the present, think about our past and look forward to the future. And so we preserve a piece of Hank Snow's story, one that includes having been a member of the Country Music Hall of Fame for more than 40 years. And this is the kind of historical preservation we should always celebrate. Uh, and so to the Snow family, thank you for sharing Hank with the world. Uh, and now I get to join in a generation of people who have been fans of his life's work. I am proud to stand here as a supporter of his legacy. Thank you, Councilmember Gamble. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Well, as Uncle Hank would say, howdy, friends and neighbors. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out for our special day. <laughs> When Sandy and I bought this property in 2015, we didn't do it so we could stand here with you all and be proud of what we did here. We bought it because it was Uncle Hank's. When I was a kid, my dad idolized Hank Snow. I grew up hearing his music around the house and wishing I could play guitar like him and calling him Uncle Hank. <laughs> because he was my grandma's brother. Some years back, we came to Nashville on vacation for the very first time, and we loved it, and we had to come back. We connected with my cousin, Jimmy, and we didn't even realize that he still owned this home until uh, Lindsay, our daughter, there she is. She, uh, she saw an ad, I think it was on Facebook, from a Tennessean, and uh, let us know that Jimmy wanted to sell the house. So we came down, we had a look, and we decided that uh, we could probably save it, even though it had been vacant for years and it was really run down. So after we took ownership, now you get to hold the paper. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much buyer's remorse Cal had, but I had a lot. <laughs>
we can't be here because you know all, we don't live here. We live in Canada. We're like Hank Snow. We're Canadians. <laughs> um, Jan and Charlie, I think you're here somewhere. There's Charlie and his wife Jan. They have raked more leaves and cleaned up more mess and helped us with trees and everything else that we needed help with. They were here for us. Chainsaw Charlie. Chainsaw Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> and Shannon was also here doing all of his computer artwork for us. Helped us to set up posters and uh, postcards everything that we could that we could sell to help pay for this restoration jeff i'm not sure if you're here i think you are because i see your kids um jeff is our neighbor and he was right here with us he was helping any way he could whenever the guests have a problem he'd run over here if terry and the boys weren't available bobby tess leanne and joelle you guys doing your Facebook lives and doing all that stuff that promotes this house every few months we get another round of people just because you guys are all doing that Mark I wanted to thank you because you brought your truck today and just for all-around general support and giving us a place to go and sit at D's and get away from here <laughs> and to all our family and friends that you saw our vision, and now it's my turn. <laughs> and that you all knew what we could do with this old girl and get her to being this point, a historic marker. <laughs> anyway, thank you all. You know, when you think of a ranch, you think of a whole big giant spread, and you're wondering why this is called Rainbow Ranch. Uh, it's called Rainbow Ranch because uh, Jimmy Rogers loved the singing cowboys. He loved Gene Autry, he loved uh, Roy Rogers, and all of those folks. And uh, uh, he preserved that past when, when he was when he was touring, and it's it's appropriate to, to, to acknowledge that uh, Hank Snow preserved the past. Country music's always in a debate of it ain't real country or this is real country. And Hank Snow just stopped recording because he had to record stuff with gimmicks as he called strings and whatnot that Chet Atkins was trying to help him with. But uh, the uh, Historical Commission honors people and places and things that are historic and uh, talking about an artist goes back to the 1940s in Nashville Hank Snow is certainly historic, and that is documented on that uh, on that plaque there. Is someone gonna take that off? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna do it while you're talking? Yes. Right. <laughs> well, he uh, he certainly had a legendary career. He was um, partly Elvis Presley's manager for a while with Colonel Tom Parker before. Uh, uh, and Tom ended up with him. Yes, we are ready. All right. Well, it says uh, Clarence.